biggest knockout machine ever. Boakao, uh, I can't pronounce his second name, obviously. Let's get right into it. In over three decades and through 300 battles in the ring, Buakao Banchamek has asserted Banchamek. himself as one of the greatest strikers in martial arts history. Really? And single handedly altered the course of the sport's development. More than Sanchai or Rotang, I know that I'm basically talking about martial arts, not Muay Thai specifically, but I just, I don't know, when I watch those three guys, I'm, I was just more in, impressed with uh, Sancho. I don't. I just don't know why. Formerly known as Poor Pramuk, he forced K1 to ban prolonged clinching with his dominant infighting. <laughs> Became the organization's first two-time middleweight king. <laughs> and then pieced out to conquer the world stage. <laughs> Today, we'll recount the legendary journey of the White Lotus, from a regional champion to a mythical icon. Furthermore, the 41-year-old Buakao will soon return to the big ring. Sambat Banchamek was born in a small Thai village in the Serene province on May 8, 1982. As is customary, he stepped into the ring at the young age of seven, being dubbed the Black Demon for his dark skin. The moniker suited him well, foreshadowing his future fearsome reputation even by exceptional local standards. I first saw the fight and fell in love with Muay Thai. We gathered a group of kids and started training ourselves. You had to pay to perform, and my mom gave me 100 baht from her last bit of money. The entire village came out to support me. That's how it all began. Before long, Sambat's enchanting charisma was on full and captivating display, drawing attention of female spectators, who gleefully watched his relentless work through the ropes. At 12 years old, he moved closer to the capital, Bangkok, and joined the Poor Pramuk Gym, eagerly immersing himself in a hardcore training regimen. Sambat adopted a new name, which according to traditional beliefs would protect the bearer from the evil eye. From now on, he would be known as Buakau, which translates to White Lotus. The last name Por Pramu came from the gym's oh, name, and suddenly he was feared more than any other curse. By 2004, the Thai fighter had claimed a critical amount of belts and international level victims. <laughs> Among them were notable Japanese names, which paved the way for the White Lotus to join the world's premier organization. Already in April, Buakao entered the K1 World Grand Prix at 154 pounds, a new weight class for him. In the round of 16 of the most prestigious kickboxing tournament, he effortlessly tripped his opponent. Occasionally adding low kicks. Here, early on in this, the first. But once the insolent fella decided to bite back. So, Jordan tight. And arrogantly put together combinations. Otherwise, this is going to detriment Jordan. Under K1. Poor Pramuk unleashed his true ferocious self. From Jordan tight. Thai having to get out of trouble. Oh, they're so tough. Woo! The adversary's only achievement in this nine minute long beatdown was not tasting the floor. The Thai is going about his business in relentless fashion. And Jordan Thai needs to cover up, really. The Thai has done. As a result, the White Lotus advanced to the final stage of the annual Game of Thrones. It was a one-day tournament in July, where eight of the deadliest kickboxers on the planet competed for the title of Undisputed Division Monarch. 
first, the 22-year-old Buakau faced John Wayne Parr. The renowned Australian was part of the sports nobility, <laughs> who had seen it all in the ring. <laughs> and was one of the favorites to win the Grand Prix. <laughs> it's not surprising that the start of this confrontation turned into a showcase of Muay Thai beauty with plenty of kicking exchanges. Now the balance that you need to have just standing with one leg and while you are being kicked with that one leg, that is crazy. Nevertheless, around the halfway point, Par switched to boxing combos and managed to seize the initiative. In response, poor Pramuk changed his tactics to keep the foe at bay, pumping kicks. The new approach bore fruit, and the third stretch ended on even terms. Nobody was willing to give up an extra round either. Whoa! I did Still, a surge of adrenaline allowed Buakau to go on the offensive, which lasted until the bell. <laughs> Having secured a high-profile wow. victory, the Thai prodigy then clashed with Takayuki Koryumaki. The lanky karateka had one-touch demolition power. Could throw solid knee strikes and even managed to defeat Mike Zambitis earlier that night. In the beginning, the Japanese athlete disrespectfully swept the tie off his feet. <laughs> Grinning, Borkow returned the favor. <laughs> and then punished him thoroughly. <laughs> Unchallenged aerial and terrestrial supremacy lasted for four minutes of doom. Until Koryumaki finally learned his lesson. After dismantling Takayuki and speed running into the final, poor Pramu crossed paths with the Japanese schoolgirl's wet dream, Masato Kobayashi. The Silver Wolf, as they called him, was one of the best kickboxers of his generation, with an extensive resume. Moreover, he was the reigning K-1 Grand Prix champion, coming in as the favorite. Kobayashi made it to the finale considerably battered. However, his indomitable samurai soul left him no choice but to engage in fiery shootouts. In retaliation, poor Pramuk started front kicking which gave him an advantage at range. <laughs> to avoid trading in the pocket, he also happily engaged in clinches. <laughs> and Masato's only hope was to read the Lotus Sutra. <laughs> Poor cause parade of excitement continued to gain momentum. <laughs> Once the Japanese striker's prayers took effect, <laughs> the 
Hardcore Pramuk's total dominance morphed into a toe to toe struggle. Even though the challenger was ahead thanks to patented Muay Thai moves. The fearless Masato had no intention of giving in. As they approached the finish line, Buakao was fully confident in his victory. Unfortunately, the slyness of the Japanese judges showed itself. <laughs> Buakao had to win the extra round that his enemy was gifted. Luckily, Masato found no antidote to the tie-ups. <laughs> By the end of the 12-minute long scrap of the year, where fans barely had time to wipe off their sweat, poor Pramuk left no doubts about the champion's name. Previously unknown outside his homeland, the Thai prospect became an instant global star. I was happy to showcase the power of Muay Thai to the world. I'm thankful to K1 for at least that. After this, our sport was heard everywhere. Muay Thai, boxing, champion. Mm. This Grand Prix had far-reaching consequences for K1. In order to discreetly prevent Buakao's hegemony, the organization imposed a rule across all weight classes, limiting clinch strikes to one per engagement. Now, the Thai phenom couldn't use not just his elbows, but also consecutive knees. The effect of this taboo wow. was on display against Kozo Takeda, where the White Lotus was forced to stay at distance. <laughs> The battle-tested Takeda, who had fought Thai guys often and successfully, capitalized on the situation. <laughs> Buakao had to adapt on the fly during the intense encounter. The winning formula was discovered in the fifth. <laughs> Adjusting to the new rule set and ringing Takeda's bell twice. In 2005, poor Pramuk went on to collide with the world champion from Belarus. His opponent did the utmost to earn the respect of the hard-headed tie. <laughs> But Buakao's kick sounded like an explosion at a construction site. <laughs> and he had no intention of holding back until the time expired. <laughs> Everyone has their own idea of Muay Thai until they take a hit from a real tie. They restricted me. I had to evolve and train in boxing. That was a nice line. <laughs> that was a nice line. Let me hit that again. Everyone has their own idea of Muay Thai until they take a hit from a real Thai. Wow. They restricted me. I had until to evolve and train in boxing three tie. times more than before. In July, the White Lotus squared off against one of the elite, Albert Kraus, the winner of the first middleweight Grand Prix in 2002, despite being regarded as one of the most skillful kickboxers in the promotion. Definitely trains hard and he's got skill. He was not reluctant to spin the deadly windmill and grind his enemies down. Kraus and Buakau had crossed paths before. That time, the Dutchman shined on the counter. And sat the tie down. <laughs> Poor Pramuk enacted revenge with a batch of artillery knees. 
He kept the gas pedal to the floor till the end. Earning points in multiple collisions. Nevertheless, the judges didn't appreciate his sportsmanship and awarded Kraus with a controversial win. Really? Poor Pramuk drew conclusions from the 2005 Grand Prix rematch and became the one who always had the last say in exchanges. Albert never managed to catch up, while Buakau high on dopamine rained down with hammers of fury. The fresher tie was ahead in the closing stages. And comfortably went to a decision. For the second year in a row, poor Pramuk reached the final, where he was greeted by Andy Sauer. It was his first crack at the belt for the energetic Dutch technician, but his ability to send guys to the shadow realm was beyond doubt. <laughs> It was a play of contrasts from the opening seconds. Buakau delivered his signature explosive kicks. And pleased in the tie-ups. Andy, on the other hand, excelled in sharp boxing flurries. At the end of the first, the contestants found the pulse of the battle. In the second frame, poor Pramuk acknowledged Sauer as a worthy adversary to trade with and tried to trap him in bear hugs. The Dutchman realized clinching was inevitable and fired from all barrels whenever possible. In return, Kuokao sought to build an advantage to prevent any risk of a robbery. Whoa! And he defied his plans at times. When the dust settled, many believed that poor Pramok had done more overall. Still, the Japanese judges clearly disliked him and gave Sauer a chance. <laughs> the Warriors stayed inside the squared circle for an additional two rounds, where the action didn't falter. It's been quite windy in the ring so far, but now the stormy sky crackled with lightning. <laughs> Late into the fifth stretch, the bout was completely even. At this point, victory could go either way. Following a 15-minute massacre in front of 18,000 spectators, the Grand Prix Championship went to Andy Sauer. Mm. Disappointed, poor Pramuk immediately left the stage. Yet everyone knew this vengeance would be legendary. All fighters have performances where they need to give more, but it's too late. This was just one of those days. As part of the retribution campaign starting in 2006, the White Lotus faced Hiroki Shishido. The Japanese Maverick attempted to corral the tie to the ropes with flashy combos. Buakao pushed the annoying foe away and flatlined him. 
руке, на прямой. И ничего слева. Коротко и ясно. Nailing his man with a left hook just 15 seconds in, poor Pramuk blew up the kamikaze with a single detonation. That same year, Buakau crossed paths with Mike Zambidis, the wrecking ball of fury and reincarnation of Kratos in one person. The Greek bruiser's knockouts were so chillingly frightening. This guy looks very scary. That look, the way he fights is actually very scary looking. That rumors about him catching four bodies in the ring circulated for years. <laughs> Although not true, there were certainly grounds for these accusations. In the ballet of violence with Buakau, despite Iron Mike's unusual agility. <laughs> He rarely managed to land on the tie. <laughs> Meanwhile, poor Pramuk targeted the legs, <laughs> bombarded the rival with body kicks, <laughs> and occasionally went up top. <laughs> <Woo>! <laughs> Even in the second round, the Spartan warrior was still desperately stuck in first gear. Zambidis' only successes were sporadic attacks to the midsection. He simply couldn't turn the tide and succumbed in every aspect to the world's second best middleweight. With this convincing decision victory, the White Lotus joined the lineup of the 2006 K1 World Grand Prix held in June. In the quarterfinals, he was greeted by Yoshihiro Sato, the best Muay Thai practitioner in all of Japan. Buakao had significantly improved his boxing since the last tournament. Something that the enemy reluctantly acknowledged. A pull one two counter landed on the money. It wasn't time to write a will yet. And the spirited Sato went for broke. Buakau put a bow on it in the second. After catching a front kick, the White Lotus Boom. uncorked a left hook that isekai the Japanese fighter into another universe. The same evening, Gago Drago awaited him in the semis, following his sensational upset win over Albert Kraus. The Armenian underdog immediately wounded the Thai's pride. Buakau eagerly jumped into the melee. Boom! And played the lead throughout the round, not giving the opponent a slightest chance to make it competitive. Gago tanked forward in the second, which suddenly helped his matters. The night was far from dull before, but now there were fireworks everywhere. And in all directions. Under the bloody moon, the white lotus blossomed. The good old Muay Thai classic. Oh. A forearm frame, a right hand over the Damn. top, and Drago is already inspecting the canvas. 
Despite Gago's obvious willingness to keep going, by the end, Buakao had only strengthened his dominance. <laughs> Ultimately, the crowds and the judges' sympathies were undeniably with the tie. A stroke of luck in the final was the old acquaintance Andy Sauer. On a streak of two dozen victories, the Dutchman had previously made a splash with a spectacular knockout. And a triumph over Masato. All things considered, the rematch between two striking wizards couldn't leave anyone indifferent. It wasn't their first rodeo for both champs, and the battlefield was iron hot from the gate. Sauer assumed the role of the aggressor early. But having reminded that revenge is best served cold, Buakao unpacked the Fluga Geheimen special. Showing unparalleled composure, and he tried to get back into the contest, for which he paid a steep price. There was no escaping for the battered Dutchman. Shaking Sour's hemispheres with two collapses, the White Lotus ended the bloody carnival with a mean punch. At 24 years old, Por Pramuk became the first two-time champion in K1's middleweight history and a national hero at home. Soon he would open the doors to his eponymous gym, a pretty audacious thing to do in Thailand. Buakao would also transform into a movie star, with his deadly mustache remaining a hit for many seasons in local barber shops. <laughs> wow. All thanks to the Night of Cracking Chins 2006 edition. It's worth noting that after the tournament, the K1 overlord got a bit cocky, showing off his invincibility. <laughs> Causing behind the scenes dissatisfaction among the higher ups. Victory in the upcoming 2007 Grand Prix would cement Buakao as the greatest middleweight of the 21st century. That's why the organizers matched him up with Masato, the only top K1 contender he hadn't faced in the past two years. The meeting started with relentless pressure from the tie. <laughs> and yet, the Silver Wolf pulled ahead with brilliant handiwork. <laughs> Suddenly, the White Lotus couldn't keep up with his dynamic Japanese counterpart. <laughs> Poor Pramuk decided to revert to his proven rock'em sock'em style. <laughs> But Kobayashi had already found a chink in his armor. Oh! Knocked down by a swift combo and caught under the shelling, Buakao refused to cave in. In the second stretch, the versatile ring soldiers picked up where they left off. <laughs> then Buakao got the punches going <laughs> and slowed the Japanese fighter down, pumping low kicks. <laughs> Only half a round later did Masato begin to restore the balance. And the ending went in his favor. Let's 
According to the rules, Por Pramuk still had a chance to win the decision. However, the Silver Wolf sensed blood and was not willing to share the spoils. Not believing his own eyes, Buakao is forced to retreat under the non-stop assault from the Japanese predator. There's no way he won this fight. This guy, this other guy is so good. Yashi was making history on live TV. And poor Pramuk had to accept not being in the driver's seat. Overcoming very long odds, Masato delivered a fantastic performance. He outplayed Buakao in areas where others crashed and burned, earning yeah. praise in the locker room. <laughs> Thailand's favorite son didn't want to sit on the sidelines and flew to Seoul in 2008. Oh. <laughs> The Korean zombie's neighbor rose from the ashes after a cemetery head kick. So poor Pramuk gave him an encore and added some punches on top. <laughs> the opponent asked for more and Buakao began to question the guy's sanity. A strong sedative seemed to be the only option to save the patient. <laughs> A strong sedative. <laughs> Nevertheless, the Thai phenom subdued the Korean without medication. The left check hook and the pull counter cross were the final arguments to stop the beating. The annual K1 Grand Prix opened with a battle against Kraus. The Dutch butcher initially aimed at the torso. Buakao recaptured control in response. He kept Albert honest throughout the bout. And cornered him on the ropes for the sake of variety. Five in a row now for Andrew Cow. Uh, his right hand by kicking him so, so consistently hard. Very effective. Whoa! Kraus frantically tried to find success late by going up top. Second round. Oh, nice. Double rounds to go for us. We got by Andrew Cow. But poor Pramuk maintained the lead all the way to the bell. Nice chance from Andrew Cow. The unpredictable judges somehow saw it as a draw. <laughs> really? The inspired Dutchman willed himself to restore parody. And that's what Krauss is doing this week because Boer Gow doesn't sleep. Upstairs to the head, looking for the headache maker. Which lasted until the end of the extra round. Oh, nice up with that For once, karma was on Por Pramuk's side. Although Albert overtly disagreed with the decision. Despite the favorable outcome, Buakao's relationship with K1 was soured and he lost motivation. This became evident in his rematch with the previously beaten Sato. Early into the rematch, Por Pramuk was confident in his invincibility. He brazenly answered Yoshihiro's left hand attacks with his right. And fired crosses down the pipe. <laughs> the signature left hook was no less heavy. The skinny Japanese counterpart absorbed the impact like SpongeBob and stayed on his feet. He rightly emphasized body blows in the process. 
Fighting back fiercely, Sato gradually depleted the Thai's gas tank. This allowed him to spice things up in the third and make it a war of attrition. Put under excruciating pressure by the immortal Japanese, Buakao was eventually stopped dead in his tracks. Opa! What and during dozens of precise offerings, Sato exhausted the star and nailed him with a right hook. What a Ooh. Buakao, knocked out, now you've seen it all. Opa! Yeah. Coming back three that I the first time I've seen him being knocked out. Months later, he locked horns with an Indian kickboxer nicknamed Black Mamba. Black Mamba. Where Pramuk proved to have steel not only in his heart, but also in his fists. It didn't take him long to seal the deal. The Black Mamba's hopes for a Tarantino-esque happy ending were shattered along with his consciousness. <laughs> Burkow's five-year-long K-1 journey culminated in the semi-final of the 2009 Grand Prix against Sauer. The Thai Dynamo dominated in all aspects, tripping his enemy down <laughs> and blasting sharp knees. See that he fight the front. Nice inside thigh kick from Poor Pramu constantly mixed targets on his signature kicks. It's just continual frustration here. Trying too much on the hands here. Nato put him on the ground. High left round kick. And he wore that one well. Additionally, he found great success with intercepting shots. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, nice. Left. Even the commentators were shocked with the verdict. Oh, come on. We're going extra round. At the risk of sounding like John McEnroe, you cannot be serious. <laughs> the tie curse took its effect thereafter, and things weren't as clear in the extra round as before. The body shot. Good high check from Sauer, but he hates the front kick. Cow's being backed up here. Sauer, beautiful, dipping left hand to the left thigh. Oh, nice right hand from... They met the final bell, neck and neck. Yes, I mean, now this round... Cross. Spinning back into midsection, Sauer trying to steal it. Kleptomaniac and really impress the judges. I'll do the fair thing. Give it to Burkow. Yeah. Oh, As the oh, final oh. result was announced, Burkow was done with K1 there and then. Burkow is disappointed. He should be disappointed. He was rocked. I'm disappointed. This is ridiculous. Because I want to slap these three judges with a wet fish. He would only return to K1 four years later for a couple of guest appearances. Nice marking the end of his involvement with the Japanese oh, League. And he oh. the neck and shot. Mm. Following a scandalous split with the promotion, Buakao had no intention of slowing down. In fact, he transformed into the boogeyman that haunted other kickboxers' nightmares. Firstly, the 28-year-old Thai ventured into shootboxing to face Toby Imada. Although the rules allowed takedowns, it didn't save the all-rounder from an avalanche of low kicks. and a visit to the hospital on crutches. Wow. Approaching his 30s, poor Pramuk returned to his Muay Thai roots. <laughs> issuing beautiful knockouts in bulk as if they were on sale. <laughs> He captured several meaningful belts. No surprise there. Starting from 2011, Buakao also participated in two tournaments of one of the leading Asian leagues, Thai Fight. <laughs> Clearly indicating he was still the alpha, the White Lotus won both times. I oh! The 
turning point for Buakau came in 2012. While in Italy on a shopping trip, Porpramuk threw down with Jabbar Askerov, a rare breed, a Dagestani striker who loved to shut opponents down with leg kicks. But could explode with his hands when needed, abruptly tripping their fuse boxes. Buakau opened the match the reliable way, an abundance of body kicks. Nice kick from Buakau's shot. Transfers to the head. Every technique scoring the same. Beautiful head kick there from Buakau. Mandatory foot sweeps. And punches on special occasions. Nice head kick. Askarov was aiming low. Nice work. Nice one. Worked the midsection himself. Left kick. And sought to catch Buakau with a missile to the head. Go for broke, Jabba Askarov. Big left. Big left up from the seasoned veterans kept up the pace late. Getting like it with a baseball bat as well. He's, every time it's either across the ribs or right across the arm. And gave a competitive ending. <laughs> Satisfying the fans with a great show without Japanese judges, the White Lotus emerged triumphant. Mm. <laughs> oh, there you go. Without Japanese judges. <laughs> Nevertheless, when he returned home, a scandal broke out. Dissatisfied for a long time with the gym owner's pro-exploitation attitude, the people's champ left the poor Pramuk gym. It turned out that for years they had withheld his earnings and had booked fights without his consent. The absence of contracts is a common problem. They can hide a third of your earnings and split the remainder so that you get only crumbs. The split was followed by a $3 million lawsuit, but the government stepped in to defend the beloved national treasure. He subsequently retook his original last name, now performing as Buakau Banchamek, and opened his own namesake gym. I swore that I would be honest with fighters, and what happened to me won't happen again. Other teams charge half of your purse. We take only 30% for management and training. It's fair. The brand change and the fallout with an influential team didn't hurt Buakau's stock, so he continued to perform in Thailand. The highlight reel kept expanding with new gems that would make even Ong Bak blush. Banchamek's record continued to swell up with extraordinary demolitions. His collection of prestigious titles kept getting bigger, respectively. Going five years undefeated, the White Lotus signed with a football club as a side quest and played a couple really? of seasons at the regional level. His longtime friend and prankster, Sanchai, also dropped by to train. Okay. <laughs> nice, nice. By the mid 2010s, Buakao had established connections in China, signing an agreement with the leading Chinese promotion, Kunlun Fight. His debut opponent, Gu Hui, got his dome rattled from the gate. <laughs> The Wushu Sanda champion was subjugated to a gut-wrenching thrashing. After consecutive humiliating landings, he carelessly lingered in the knee blast area. Having dispatched the organization's homegrown star, half a year later, Buakao delighted the fans with other trademark moves. <laughs> Setting things in motion with an overhand. <laughs> he went hunting for the enemy's scalp. <laughs> and caught him with a picture-perfect combo. <laughs> Kicking off the new chapter with a bang, Buakao spent several eventful years in China, bulldozing through the Kunlun fight aristocracy. Soon the promotional landscape began to resemble a graveyard. 
And Bancha Mech received a coronation worthy of an emperor. World champion Golden Belt. His best piece of work in the league came against Marwan Tudu in 2017. Fearlessly engaging in a trade with the Moroccan. The tie clocked him over the guard and added a soccer kick. The wild ride lasted about four minutes. A sinister left hook caught Tutu slipping, and he went down like a lead balloon. <laughs> the doctors had their hands Damn. full. Wow. Wokao once Was again did not disappoint the former and reigning kings of Thailand, whose photos he always carried. Visiting another Chinese promotion in 2015, Ban Chimek engaged in a memorable two-part series with the so-called Shaolin monk, Yi Long, with the gold at stake. The self-taught warrior's only relation to the famous temple was his bald head and yellow pants, while his popularity <laughs> came thanks to a viral YouTube clip. Wow! And they had wow! Nonetheless, the <laughs> this one-punch man copycat was ready to throw down with anyone. Look at this! Whoa! There's plenty of power difference? and fighting spirit in this fella. <laughs> And Boaco fought him. What the hell? <laughs> the memeable Chinese daredevil got the ball rolling in a truly unforgettable manner. <laughs> Boaco was perplexed. Damn. He soon regained his composure, and things got much better. However, Yi Long refused to submit. Responding on occasion. The Thai tried to cool his ardor with foot sweeps. And was almost regretting taking the fight by the end. Pulling off a miracle, Yi Long survived three rounds in the midst of a zombie apocalypse, surprising the world. Victory was not on the table, though. In their title sequel in 2016, the monk was as audacious as ever. Leaping right into the thick of things. Bo Kao found a way to slow down the frantic tempo. And then launched a counter offensive. The party resumed at the midpoint to the rhythm of strikes flying in both directions. Bancha Mech reintroduced the tossing tactic. Yi Long's answer was to jump at him from a running start <laughs> and drag the champion into a chaotic melee. <laughs> After that, the dog tired Maverick lost the last stretch across the board. <laughs> Albeit bright, the monk's moment of fame seemed to be fleeting, but the judge's verdict made it imperishable. Hmm. Buokao wasn't interested in regional showdowns at this point. In 2017, he starred in a new action movie where he played the lead role. The sex symbol status was now just around the corner. To coincide with this significant event, Buokao moved back home and signed with the All-Star Fight promotion. Just like before, the opposition couldn't hold a candle to the living icon of martial arts. 
In 2019, Bonchamek squared off against Chris Ngimbe, a renowned champion and a knockout artist with a tendency to fly. Look at that. Still, he also proved no match after a couple of falls. A body shot paired with a high kick wasn't enough, so Buakau polished him off with consecutive hooks. Following yet another dismantling, the 37-year-old veteran realized that there was nothing left to prove and retired from professional sports. This allowed him to focus on helping the younger generation in his own gym. Among Buakau's students was the young star Superbon, who keeps it playful with the sensei, but turns into a savage in the one championship cage. Olivier Cost. In addition to his coaching duties, Buakau hosted Muay Thai tournaments in his own backyard. Nobody dared to disappoint the White Lotus with cautious game plans. In retirement, Bonchamek got Ooh. into YouTube and started developing a highly popular channel with a wide variety of content to suit every taste. His production team is always extremely motivated. <laughs> Buakau's girlfriend also wholeheartedly supports his endeavors and doesn't shy away from participation. Headshot. Now every Muay Thai fan knows Banchamek is a man of boundless talent. The White Lotus maintained his physical shape with exhibition outings. Even his appointment as the executive director of the Kickboxing Association of Thailand in 2021 didn't save his adversaries. <laughs> In 2022, the indefatigable Buakau came back to promote the second best stadium in Thailand, the Rajadam Nairn. In an exhibition match, the glory seeker from Japan evoked more pity than an abandoned kitten. <laughs> <laughs> Although Banchimek put some weight behind his strikes only towards the end. The humidity in the arena kept rising, while the TIE fighter did everything possible not to cut the opponent's humidity. pretty face open. Eventually, instead of blasting a couple of lethal bombs, Burkow faked a ferocious finishing sequence for show. Successfully pitching his dance partner as a resilient macho to the delight of the female audience, Banchimek got his long-awaited rendezvous with Sato. First, he worked the crowd. <laughs> then turned things up to usual levels. <laughs> and wrote a check Yoshihiro couldn't cash. <laughs> Removing Sato's hand away, Buakau <laughs> planted a right hook from hell. The beauty of Muay Thai as it is. The White Lotus is busier than ever these days. He's set to have an exhibition boxing match in 2024 with oh, wow. retired icon Manny Pacquiao. Prior to that, Banchamek is in for a special rules bare knuckle Muay Thai bout now versus Sanchai, an undisputed legend and possibly the best Thai boxer in history. Oh, question mark. We'll soon find out what will come of the battle between eight-limb style virtuosos. <laughs> Oy. In the meantime, Buakau continues to piece up his old pal outside the ring. <laughs> Throughout his decades-long career, Buakau won the fans' unconditional love with his rugged charisma and unwavering determination, which remained unchanged regardless of organizations and weight classes. <laughs>
Although the White Lotus had reached the pinnacle of the sport two decades ago, he continues to put his opponents through a ringer, even at the age of 41. His far from complete official record includes 241 victories with 74 knockouts and 24 losses, many of which were highly disputed. If you enjoyed the video and want to nice. see more K1 icons, kick the Wow, that was a long one, man. Uh, I've already watched Barker before, so I'm not really surprised by what I saw. But I didn't really know he was so... Because I, I watched those three guys during the same period, Buaka, Rota, and Sunshine. And if I were to rank, I would have put Sunshine, Rota, and then Buaka. But from this video, it's making me to reconsider. Making me to start thinking, maybe I was wrong. Maybe Buaka is actually the man that should be at the top in that um, ranking. What do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments. Thank you guys for watching. See you in the next one. Peace.